Hello fellow RPG makers and welcome to another video. In the previous videos you have seen me use Pixie Sprite dot from image. However, I have always said that I use it only for simplicity and that you should not use it unless you want to deal with pitfalls Pixie has. And now I don't mean that uh, Pixie is bad by any means. Pixie is a very powerful tool and with the new tools or new tools they have been out there quite a while but with the tools we have out there you can really see the power of Pixie. For example here we have the Pixie text style editor that allows you to play with the text how it looks and see the changes on the screen. So for example just some basic I'll create a large gradient of multiple colors. Orange, let's have some gray or this is not gray this is some weird blue. Let's have some green and I can add many and many more gradients. This you cannot do with the default MV text unless you do some real shenanigans. Next to it we have some pixie demos. You always have a demo and underneath it you can see the code that was used to achieve the demo. So for example this is the pixie graphics. However as you have seen in my Pixie DIY series demo, if you have seen a uh, demo tutorial, if you have seen it, uh, the, if you use WebGL rendering, by default the edges are not entirely yes, so they are not too sharp, and you need to generate texture from them in order for them to be entirely yes. So that is one of the pitfalls Pixie has. Then here we have filters. You can see all sorts of filters that are currently out there for Pixie. I have turned a couple of them on. One of them is Bloom Filter, then Bulge Pinch Filter and Gadre Filter. Bloom Filter made it uh, lighter. Gadre Filter is this sunshine that normally is yellow, but this, this uh, filter combination turned it, turned it blue. And the Bulge, bulge Pinch Filter does all sorts of weird stuff. You can see these colors sometimes blink, sometimes the screen changes, that is the bulge pinch filter. However, filters have another pitfall, they can be used only with WebGL mode. So that means you should go here, go to plugin manager and in community basic rendering mode sets to canvas, uh, not canvas, WebGL because if the, the device is not compatible with WebGL mode, it won't render the filters properly and as such it would it would lose kind of an importance. Nevertheless the most important of Pixie pitfalls is the textures. Now by textures I don't mean the actual textures but rather the texture storage because even though JavaScript is garbage collected this garbage collection uh, involves only dangling pointers and empty references. So for example, if I do var x equals 5, this is not an empty reference. It is a reference that will stay in the memory until I delete it or until the I close the program. If I then go var uh, uh, x equals undefined, then whatever the value behind it is, it is not referenced anymore and will get swooped by the garbage collector and the X will get swooped by the garbage collector too because it is a dangling pointer. This is however not the case if I go to Pixie, Utils, Texture Cache. As you can see there is an entry and if I go new or uh, pixie sprite from image and read the texture cache again i can see there is a new entry and even if i wait a couple of seconds nothing happens the sprite since it had no reference will get swooped from the memory but the texture stays there because it has the reference here and that is very important to note because if you have textures of size, I don't know, 3 megabytes, one texture is okay. A hundred, 
that's a problem. But having a thousand of them in the memory is impossible, the game would crash. Now even though Pixie itself has garbage collectors, they are stored inside graphics, render, in other words in the render, and even though the render is running, which we can find if we go to texture GC, we can see the mode 0, and in Pixie GC mode we can see that 0 means auto. If we take a look inside the the documentation now this is a documentation for pixie 5 but for pixie 4 it is not too different it is just syntactic sugar if i say it simply we can see that the garbage collection only involves gpu but the memory itself has to be cleared manually and by cleared i really mean cleared because not only we have the textures case there where they stay, but also if I go new pixie text and go check the, the, the texture cache, I have a new entry. Even if I go pixie graphics, that will add a new entry to the texture cache. So I really need to take care of the texture cache if I want to have the memory consumption low. So this is something you need to take care of. And you take care of by uh, you take care of it by taking the texture utils texture cache. You use for example this dot destroy. And if I go back to the texture cache again, as you can see, the entry has disappeared from the texture cache. Now, in case you have vertex. In case you have the texture saved behind a variable for an easier reference, once again you first go to text.destroy to see that the texture cache, this, uh, the texture cache entry is removed. And by the way, if you want to destroy the base texture cache, because we don't have just textures, but we have also base textures. You need to go destroy true from the textures. From the sprite, you go true for texture and true for base texture. And then true for children. But anyway, after you destroy the texture, if we go text, we can see the base texture is now. In other words, the texture is destroyed. So then we can just go the de not delete text, but text equals undefined. And now text is text is then link pointer, and this is an empty reference. It will get swooped by the memory uh, by the garbage collector. So another pitfall I will cover is if you use Pixie sprite from image. This is not recommended to use because you need time to load the texture. Because if you add it to the uh, to the scene without giving it time to load, it would just create a small or not small a black rectangle of the size of the texture. On the other hand, if you use Pixie uh, new Pixie sprite texture it will wait until the texture is properly loaded and only after that it will display the texture either way unless you wait until the texture is loaded in any of the two cases you will not display the sprite properly so this is why preloading is very important to give it time to preload so that would be it for this video and if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll see you in the next video. The next video will be about bed loss because currently the most requests I have received are about bed loss so even though I did not plan it initially I will take a look at the bed loss and I'll return here to the map someday. So take care.